What's up guys, it's Ozzy from Osox Hardware, and with me today I have this computer from 2001. Now firstly, this video was going to be titled, Can You Game on a Single Core CPU? But I kind of scrapped that idea because I already know the uh, answer to that question, and I thought that would be a little bit clickbaity. So I decided to make it a continuation of my $50 gaming PC from 2006, and if you guys haven't watched that, I recommend go checking it out just so you can get a feel of what this video is going to be like. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. So building this computer was pretty cool, but it was probably the most annoying computer that I've ever built on the channel so far. So much so that I'm going to name it the most annoying build I've ever built on this channel so far. Now some of the issues were my fault, some of them were out of my control, but firstly, I had everything set up, but then it ended up that my motherboard does not support legacy USB booting, so I cannot boot from my USB or install Windows from a USB thumb drive. So to combat this error, my plan was to pick up an IDE drive and then use my backup Ubuntu 10.04 CD install disk and install Ubuntu on the system, and then use Plop as a legacy emulated USB booter and then boot Windows onto that. I picked up the IDE drive, add the Ubuntu disk ready, but guess what? It was the 64-bit version of Ubuntu, and the CPU that I have is only 32-bit, so I couldn't install anything anywhere. So at this point, I'm kind of mad at myself for not preparing better because I prolonged this build a couple of days. So I decided to go pick up some blank DVDs and install Windows XP on the DVD and then install that on the motherboard. But uh, when I tried to do that, the motherboard decided to die. So I had to go and order a brand new, well not new, but I had to order a different motherboard for $15 off Amazon and then install everything back onto that motherboard, install Windows XP, and it finally started running. So first up, I have the Athlon XP 1500 Plus. Now this had an MSRP of $130 back in 2001, but now you can find it for about five bucks on eBay. Specs wise, it's clocked at 1.33 gigahertz. It only has 256 kilobytes of L2 cache. And like I mentioned earlier, it is a 32-bit CPU. 64-bit CPUs do not come out until around 2004 era when uh, AMD released the Athlon 64. So for now, we're just stuck on 32-bit. So I do not have a CPU cooler on me, so I use this CPU CPU cooler that I bought for about eight bucks fit just fine and the temperatures were really really nice too. I was actually averaging around 30 degrees Celsius and then went up to about 45 at load. I wanted to overclock but I just didn't have the time and if I do have the time though I will update you guys on how well the overclocking actually worked with this computer. Next up is the video card. I had a GeForce MX440. Now I did not choose this one specifically. I actually had it laying around in one of my dad's old servers. So I decided to pick this one up and use it for this build. Now the MSRP here was $130 again, like the Athlon. So it's not a very high end GPU. Think of it kind of like a GTX 950 now-ish. Right now on eBay, they go for around $6, which I'm not too surprised about considering that this is a super old card and it wasn't exactly high end back in the day. Now the specifications here are kind of crazy. Uh, it had 64 megabytes of VRAM, which is insane to think that iGPUs now can have more VRAM than that. And that the, even the lowest end video cards on the market have like three to four times more VRAM than that. Now it is using an AGP interface. Uh, PCIe has not really made its way into the market yet. We still have about two, three, four years until that becomes notable and uh, it starts appearing on the first video cards and the first motherboards. Now the video rendering API support is down to not DirectX 9 or 8, but 7. I didn't even know there was a DirectX 7 until I started this video. Now DirectX 8 was making its way into the scene as a few cards were coming out with DirectX 8. DirectX 9 was not even conceptual at this point. It's way far down the road. But to think that this thing had DirectX 7 and that was an actual thing. I just, it just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Now the hard drive I'm using is just a 20 gigabyte IDE Seagate hard drive. Now these, at least according to you, went from around 70 to 90 bucks. On eBay, you can get a 40 gigabyte version for like five to $6. Again, that's just the depreciation of storage space and the IDE interface. Not too surprised there either. Now the computer is also rocking two 512 megabytes of uh, DDR RAM. 
and uh, I could not actually find the price of the 512 megabyte sticks on Newegg, but I did find the 256 megabyte sticks, and those went for around 70 to up to $100. Now, to find the MSRP of this specific motherboard will be kind of difficult considering it came out more than a decade ago, but according to Newegg and Wayback Machine, uh, for this socket, motherboards of this stature range from about $80 to $170. So somewhere in the middle is where you would find a motherboard of this price. Now the power supply I'm using is actually from the $25 gaming PC video, and it is a 600 watt power supply, which is way more than I needed. I actually had a 250 watt that I was planning to use, but it does not have a 20 pin connector. It's just the 24 pin, it's not 20 plus four. Now just for the kicks, a quality 400 watt power supply was considered high end at the time, and those were about 80 bucks or higher if you wanted a decent one. So in 2001, this build would be about $500 to $600. In 2016, this computer would be worth somewhere between $30 and $50. Bucks. Huge difference. So now for the benchmarks. I did not test any newer titles because I knew this computer would not be able to run anything past 2003. So with the titles I ran, the benchmarks were pretty interesting. So in Deuce X, Game of the Year Edition, a game from 2000, I believe, it was running max settings at 1024 by 768, which was considered the most popular resolution at the time. It was between this and 800 by 600. Running at that resolution had a minimum of 17, a maximum of 55, and an average of 33.35. Now, Medal of Honor Allied Assault, which is a critically acclaimed title from 2001, uh, max settings again at 1024 by 768. It was the smoothest game I, d I played out of all of them by a long shot. At a maximum of 81, a minimum of 19, and an average of 42.17. Now, on to Morrowind, a game from 2002 or 2003, I believe. This game was probably the hardest game for me to play, and I think that the single core CPU probably made a huge difference in the gameplay. If I had a dual core, I probably would have gotten a lot better performance. But with medium viewing distance and low shadows at 1024 by 768, it was decent inside at an average of 28.75 FPS inside of a building, but when I went outside, it dropped massively to like 20 frames per second. It was kind of unplayable at that settings. So I tried to turn it down a little bit. At 800 by 600, it was still pretty choppy outside, but I was averaging around 27 FPS, and inside it was like up in the 50s. So this game was probably one of the harder games to play in 2001. So now on to the last game, Halo. This game actually released in 2001, I believe, on the Xbox, but then it was ported to PC in 2003. So at 1024 by 768, low particles, medium textures, at a minimum of 24, a maximum of 121, and an average of 55.267. Super smooth gameplay, not as smooth as Medal of Honor, but pretty far up there. So this was really just to show you guys how crazy insane we've progressed in the next 15 years and what the potential is in the next 15 years after that. So in 2031, what do you guys think will be the staple gaming computer for most consumers out there? What do you think the highest end systems will run and what do you think the lowest end systems will run? What will be the price of a GTX 1080 in 15 years? Will you be able to pick one up for a measly 20 bucks on eBay? If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely give it a like. And if you loved it, definitely subscribe. I have more videos like this coming out soon. And I also will be going back to theoretical builds because a lot of people have been asking me questions for a specific budget. So expect some of those soon. This is Ozzy and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.